What's going on, Sky Squad? We are back in the building, and we're going to be talking about Candy and the Gang, Portia and Kenya. And then stick around to the end, because I got some interesting tea coming out, out of Salt Lake City, and it is very interesting. Interesting indeed. And we touched on this yesterday in our review from Salt Lake City. If you guys are wondering why I'm dressed up, I just did a segment on NBC 10 Boston with Derek Z. We were talking about Candy and the Gang and the Real Housewives of New Jersey. So it's interesting that this news is about Candy and the Gang. Okay, so let me pull it up. Basically, this is from an old clip. Now, our friends over at Bro Chat. They be pulling up these classic clips and clips that I didn't even know existed. So the neighborhood talk happened to pick up this particular clip right here. So let's get into what was said, okay? Now, what was said in the clip was Mama Joyce says Portia is what Kenya wishes she was 10 years ago, okay? And so Candy can be heard in the background saying, oh, mama, they both beautiful. And then, you know, Mama Joyce is definitely like, well, you know, they both are beautiful. But, you know, Portia is just a brick house. She's a brick house. OK, um, so again, this clip is old. Disclaimer, it's old. It's a flashback. OK. It's a take me back Tuesday, all right? So for y'all get in the chat talking about what well, is this an old clip? We know. Everybody knows, okay? Everybody knows. So you ain't got to say it, all right? Now, the fact that it's being reshared today. Now, the reason why it's news on this channel is because people are starting to wonder if Portia is being messy by resharing this on her Instagram story in her efforts to promote Candy's spinoff coming up on Sunday, okay? And in case you missed the post, here you go, all right? So as you guys can see, Portia posted this on her Instagram story. It says, always have loved Mama Joyce. Yes, we're beautiful, but gotta love that she says what she wants. Make sure y'all catch, watch Candy and the Gang on Bravo TV at The Candy. OK, now, <laughs> granted, Portia did say in this post, she did say. Yes, we're both beautiful, <laughs> but the shade is in the fact that she reposted it at all, because to be quite honest with you, if she really wanted to support Candy and the gang, all she had to do was post the clip that's making clips from the shows that are making its way around the interwebs. Or basically take something from bravotv.com and reshare it to her IG story. But what I think Portia knows is that she didn't learn, okay? Portia didn't learn a couple of things, whether it was from, you know, getting with Simon, who definitely knows how to troll the people. You know what I'm saying? He know how to get your attention on social media. Or whether or not she, you know, because Portia know how to get your attention on social media too, okay? And so my thought is maybe she felt like this post would probably have the bigger impact because as it stands now, everybody's resharing it, okay? It's being reshared on tons of accounts. You know what I'm saying? Tons of accounts. So, and we're even talking about it right now. So my thought is, was this just smart promo on Porsche's behalf or was this the shade? Was this the mess? Y'all let me know in the chatterization down below. I mean, at the end of the day, we talking about candy in the gang, all right? In, in, in some type of conversation, whether or not it's related to the mess that Portia is, maybe, maybe, we don't know what she's stirring up the mess or was she just being a supportive friend and doing what she needed to do to get the extra promo for Candy's spinoff? Y'all let me know in that good chatterization down below. Was it mess or was it just fun shade? Let a brother know. Okay. Now, let's get into something that we talked about yesterday. Now, for those of you guys who are fans of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, you guys may have noticed, and we talked about it yesterday on the review for Salt Lake City, that Lisa Barlow had brought up, and it was a very tiny mention. And I had to watch it actually twice to make sure that I act, well, two times after I first saw it, to make sure that I actually heard it correctly. But she had shared with the world that Heather had gotten the DWI. 
uh, uh, not the DWI, the DUI, excuse me. Q, excuse me. Let me get that right. The DUI, because I don't want nobody saying I got it wrong. But in case you needed more information, well, here it is. So apparently, after this week's episode, the sun, okay, they did some digging. All right. And they came up with this information uh, from and, and shout out to our friends over at Housewives of SLC with this uh, the Suns exclusive right here. And I'll, I'll put the link in the description down below as well when I go find it. So basically, here is the thing. They're saying that um, this arrest was made in July 2012. OK, so over a decade ago, a decade ago at this point, almost a decade on the nose. We've got a couple more months before July. Um, it says Heather was arrested and charged with the DUI during a traffic stop. The charge was later reduced to reckless driving where she was found guilty. OK, um, they say she had had allegedly a few. Let me put this down on the, in the description down below, just in case, because, you know, how the folks is. Uh, and I want to make sure that I get all this information correct. OK. She had a few sips with friends at a local club. And apparently she told the officer that she had a prescription for the Adderall. OK. She had refused the breathalyzer test and was arrested. Now, according to this article, the test revealed because you know, you can not do the breathalyzer, but if a search warrant and blood is obtained, they're going to get what they get. Apparently, the test revealed blood alcohol concentration of 0.06 and a positive test for amphetamines. OK, she pleaded not guilty to the DUI misdemeanor traffic charge at her arraignment. And um, basically, she argued that. The officer exceeded the scope of the search warrant by instructing the toxicologist to search for amphetamines in her blood where the search warrant states specifically the substance alcohol, thus suggesting that alcohol was the sole item to be tested. So after asking for any evidence to be suppressed, the judge denied Heather's motion to exclude the evidence. The charge was reduced to reckless driving and she was found guilty. The second charge was dismissed. She was sentenced to 180 days in jail, but the court ruled 178 days would be suspended and she was allowed to complete 48 hours of community service in lieu of the two days in jail. She was also ordered to pay a $600 court fine. OK, um, they say she was on the probation for 364 days and was ordered to attend the live mad victim panel uh, impact panel, you know. Mm mm mm. All these women, first of all, let me just say this. You know, again, I have friends who have had DUIs and I don't really, I don't, re I'm not shaming nobody for nothing that they have because to be honest with you, everybody makes mistakes in life. Okay. So I'm not here to be that person and I'm not even really here to feel like this is some type of expose on Heather at all. But what I do want to point out is this. These women on this show were so quick to call out all like, listen, they was real quick to call out the Mary and everything, the allegations about the church and everything like that. And now that Mary's not there, they didn't turned on each other as what is usually going to happen when you're when the focus of your show becomes taking people down and trying to pull out these you know, secrets and, and all alleged secrets about other people, somebody's going to end up doing the same thing to you. So that's why, like, when you get on these shows, you don't have to go that route. And I want to say this, and I want to come back on the screen and say this, you know, when you get on a reality TV show, it does not have to become the sole purpose of the show to out someone's secrets or to make somebody the villain or to turn everybody against somebody else because the moment you do that is the moment that somebody else is going to do it to you most likely on somebody else on the show so just as soon as y'all get rid of the person that y'all have deemed to be the um the target this season don't you know that those same other people are going to be targeting you so you got to be careful about what you do on these reality TV shows for the sake of making TV because it ain't always worth it. 
you can get on the screen and fight with somebody and and go at it about what's actually happening on the show currently without having to go oh let me go back into somebody let me talk about something that we ain't talk you know it's just like you ain't got to do all that you ain't got to do all that and again this ain't no coming down on somebody because you know they got a DUI or something like that i don't care about nothing like that i don't care about no mistakes that you have made in your past really all i do know is that it was mentioned and i just think it's funny that everybody was so quick to jump on the oh mary and her church but y'all all got things that that have happened in your past or that you have done that you may not really feel like talking about so just i'm gonna leave it at that all right um so let me know what y'all think about this situation i wanted to know more because lisa had mentioned it and i was like oh uh, heather said no that's not true and clearly it's partially true right partially a little bit kind of sort of almost y'all let me know in the chatterization down below listen subscribe to the channel if y'all want more news entertainment reality recaps and things like that